This segment of our course on gearboxes deals with the disassembly and inspection of the machine that you were just shown in the last segment. This is the gearbox we will be using throughout the remainder of this segment and during the reassembly procedures. It is similar to many that you will find throughout the industry. The first step will be to assemble the required tools, equipment, and supplies. Then put on the proper safety equipment for the job, as required by your plant regulations. Before beginning disassembly, the workman drains any lubricating oil that is still remaining in the gearbox. The waste oil drained from the case should be examined for contamination. Oils can sometimes furnish clues as to the cause of machine failures. He then removes all lubrication and coolant lines that are attached to the gearbox from external sources. This includes lines to the lubrication pump and lines to the oil cooler, if your gearbox is so equipped. Next, clean the outside of the gear case to prevent dirt or other foreign matter from falling into the case during disassembly. It's also wise to match mark parts now to prevent difficulties later during reassembly. You are now ready for the disassembly of this gearbox. Should your gearbox come with the coupling halves still on their shafts, your next step would be to remove the couplings as you have been previously instructed. Now, unbolt the bearing end cover closing the end of the high-speed pinion shaft. And remove the cover from the gear case and set it aside. The baffle plates at the open ends of the shafting should next be removed. Now having removed the bolts that secure the oil pump bracket to the gear case, remove the oil pump by drawing it straight from the shaft. Next, remove all the cap screws joining the upper case to the lower case. The dowel pins that align the cover with the gearbox must also be removed at this time. Now with a sling fashioned in the eye bolt, apply tension slowly with the hoist until the joint between the cover and the gear case is broken. As you know, on large units, jack bolts are usually provided to assist in this task. Once the cover is detached from the gear case, lift it straight up until it is well clear of the gear case and gears. Take care that the cover does not bump the gear teeth in the process. Then set the cover aside on a surface that will not damage the machined flange of the cover. Wooden runners placed on the floor are ideal for large units. The top bearing halves of both shafts must now be removed. Starting with the gear wheel, or low speed shaft, remove the screws which hold the top half to the bottom half. Remove the top half of the bearing from the shaft. And set it aside in a protected area, identifying the bearing as to its location in the assembly. And repeat these steps for the three remaining bearings in the reduction gear. Before removing the gears, be sure that the pinion gear is match marked with the gear wheel, or as it is sometimes called, the bull gear, as is being shown here. If the gears are not match marked, then do so. And mentally note or mark the gear as to its orientation with the gear box. In other words, which end goes where? With this one, it's easy. The slow speed gear shaft extension must mate with the gear pump. Now, simultaneously rotating the shaft, lift the gear from its lower bearing halves. This must be done carefully to prevent damage to the gear teeth and lower bearings. This is a small pinion and may be manually handled. Larger gears must be rigged and hoisted out. Set the pinion gear aside on a protective surface, as shown here, to protect the gear teeth and block the gear to prevent it from rolling. And repeat the operation on the bull gear. 
Be careful to protect the Babbitt thrust shoulders on the low speed bearings. The bottom halves of the four bearings may now be removed. Then remove the low speed bearing locking pins from the lower case. Be careful that these pins don't fall out when the bearings are removed. Now mate the bearing bottom halves with their top halves for identification. The remaining steps in the disassembly cover the lubricating system. They will vary widely depending upon how the reduction gear is lubricated. With this type, we would unbolt and remove the cover from the oil strainer body, as the workman is doing here. And remove the oil strainer from the body. Separate the oil pump case from the oil pump bracket. Then remove the oil pump gears. And save the gasket. We'll need it for reference when we replace it with a new one. That completes the disassembly of this parallel shaft single reduction gearbox. Now that we have the reduction gear disassembled, the next step in our work is to clean the parts thoroughly so that a close inspection of them would reveal any flaws. From our inspection, we must decide what parts can be reused, what parts may be repaired, and what parts must be procured for the reassembly. Cleaning includes gears, bearings, and all parts including the case. Oil lines and passageways must be cleaned to ensure that they are free of obstruction. Applying a jet of compressed air through the piping and passageways, as this workman is doing, helps in this task. If the oil distribution system is equipped with spray nozzles, as shown in this example, it is very important that they be freed of any obstruction. Carefully inspect the shaft bearing journals for burning, uneven wear, and searing. With a micrometer, measure the shaft journals for roundness and to determine whether tolerances are within the manufacturer's specifications. The gear teeth of both the gear wheel and the pinion must be carefully inspected for wear, pitting, spalling, breakage, or other signs of trouble. Examine the Babbitt bearing liner surfaces of each bearing for excess wear, flaking, or wiping. And if troubles are found of this nature, let your supervisor know about it. With the gear assemblies mounted between centers in a lathe, polish the shaft journal fits and indicate these fits for runout. In some cases, it may be necessary to check the balance of gear assemblies if prior investigation warrants it. Inspect the lube oil pump, paying particular attention to the gears. Repair or replace as required and service the oil cooler if your model is so equipped. Check the mating flanges of the gear case and cover for any nick or burr that might prevent proper joining. Inspect the bearing housing fits in the case and cover for any indication of improper fitting. Following your inspection and examination of the component parts, initiate orders for these parts that must be replaced and furnish the necessary instructions if the part is to be repaired by someone other than yourself. That completes this segment on the disassembly and the inspection of a parallel shaft single reduction gearbox. We'll be back to show you the reassembly procedures after you have completed exercise number three in your workbook.